Wow, look at that autofocus. Not too bad, huh? What's up everyone, Brock Bailey here. Today I wanna to go over the autofocus settings I use for the new Panasonic S1 camera and why I like to use autofocus in certain situations when it comes to wedding cinematography. I just wanna let you know that this video is shot on the Panasonic S1, filming me right now with the 24 to 105 lens in completely autofocus mode. So as you can see, it's kind of following me, it should be. So I'm gonna come out of frame come into frame, see if it picks back up. See, it's doing a little hunting right now. Um, but as you see, it gets back on top of it. But if I'm kind of right here in the zone, it kind of should stay focused on my face in tracking. So come to the camera, come out from the camera, come into the camera, come out to the camera. So I'm kind of liking this so far. It's not doing too much hunting. Looks like it's staying pretty in focus. Let's get right here, let's see how long it takes. Let's get back here, see how long it takes. Ooh, it's doing a little bit of hunting right there. So yeah, it does a little bit of hunting, but it does find its focus. Obviously, the Panasonic S1 is not like the Canon. It's not like the Sony a7 III. Those are great autofocus tools for your toolkit. This is basically Panasonic's, in my opinion, the best autofocus Panasonic has made for um, consumer cameras. So when it comes to weddings, um, I do use autofocus and I do use manual focus. I don't trust the Panasonic S1 too much when it comes to autofocus for a complete wedding, but there are certain situations where I would like to use autofocus over manual focus. For example, if I'm doing a wide gimbal shot, I'm pretty much happy with the autofocus and that because it's getting like a wide general area. Um, I can kind of just get the Ronin S, go low with it, track the bride, track the groom. If I want to do establishing low shots, pretty much those shots are always in autofocus. Also, I like to do detail shots with autofocus when it comes to rings, shoes, dress, all that kind of stuff. I feel autofocus is great for that as well. I also feel portrait sessions I can use great autofocus for. Um, when it comes to those nice tight shots of the of the bride's eyes or the ring or the earrings or them kissing, any of that kind of stuff. I really like to use autofocus for that as well um, because the face tracking on this camera is pretty good. Um, I haven't had too many issues with it yet, um, but usually in those situations, I just do face tracking and then I kind of just um, point at the subject that I'm looking for and then um, autofocus is pretty well on that. One downside of the autofocus, well in my opinion, is trying to track the bride coming down the aisle because I feel if it finds a different person, it usually kind of locks onto that rather than the bride. So in that case, I use manual focus because I can't miss that shot. Also, autofocus isn't great in low light, so I try to use manual focus as much as I can when it comes to the dancing part of the night. It kind of hunts for me in low light for some reason. Um, so I really like to keep manual focus for those shots as well. Another feature I like is the tap to focus. Um, I use this a lot when I'm trying to get a different focal point quickly. So say I'm, tr I'm doing a wide shot of the bride, I'll go from the face to the bouquet and it tracks when I'm, tra when I'm doing a push-in shot with the Ronin S, it works pretty well with that. Um, other stuff I like to do is during portrait session when I'm trying to like tap the focus as they're like running through a field or something like that as we're continually moving, I like to keep them in focus that way as well. So tap to focus is kind of my go-to when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, it works pretty well, but I pretty much only use two autofocus settings on this Panasonic camera. So the first thing I do is obviously, I don't have a lens on right now, but if the lens is autofocus, I'll turn that mode to autofocus. Um, instead of the manual focus, I'll turn that on. I'll turn this on the back of the dial right here. Let's see if it picks it up. There's a dial right here where it goes from manual focus to continue focus. So it's the letter C right on top of here. So there's manual focus, continue focus, and a single shot focus. So continuous focus, I always go to there when I'm doing all of my autofocus shots. So right here, I'm gonna click this in right underneath the continuous focus. It's right on the dial, so I'll just click that in. And then five or six options come up. I don't really use all of them. I usually use one area, and I'll set where I want my area, where I want it to be focused. That's usually pretty good for the tap to focus. Um, also, if you're wanting to just keep everything centered within the shot, I keep that in. I just try to keep what I want in the center or in one of the thirds 
depending on which I'm wanting to do for my uh, rule of thirds. And then I also do the tracking, the face tracking and animal detect system, I think that's what it's called, um, which is the far left. And that's what I use for all my face tracking. That's what I'm using right now in this video. And that's what I do for my portrait stuff, my details, that kind of stuff, not my details, my, my portrait stuff, and kind of like my run and gun kind of setup uh, with the Ronin S. So other stuff I like about this camera is obviously it's 4K 60 full frame. Um, there's this light crop in 4K 60. It goes down to a APS-C sensor, so it's one and a half times crop which isn't bad, I kind of like that look anyways, um, but it does shoot full frame at the full 4K 24 frames a second, um, which I rarely use in weddings. Um, I'm pretty much shooting 4K 60 all day, um, except for like speeches. I think that's the only thing I don't do 4K 60, but everything else I'm doing 4K 60 just in case I want to slow it down at any time when I'm editing the film. So another big, huge perk of this camera is um, it's great in low light. Um, some weddings I'm pushing 15,000 ISO depending on situation. So yeah, rarely I will go to 12,000 ISO. That's kind of my limit on this camera. Um, I feel subjects start to get pretty dang soft, especially when it's not lit. Um, so I don't really like to go above that. Um, actually pretty much 10,000 I think is probably what I would limit, which is high. So um, I can go pretty much any situation I want and go to 10,000 ISO for low light conditions and be pretty okay with that out um, with the product. Another thing I like about this camera is the color science. Um, I feel like it's a little bit better than the previous generation I had of the GH5. Um, I just really like the way it looks straight out of camera. I don't have to do too much color correction, but personally for the way I like to edit and grade things, um, I really like the color science that comes out of this camera. A couple of the cons, um, obviously the autofocus isn't as best as I would like it to be, but it's still pretty good. I wish it would shoot like the Canon or the Sony A7 III because those camera systems are great when it comes to autofocus. So when the new firmware comes out, this camera system is gonna be even better. It's gonna have that dynamic range, it's gonna have full V-Log, not the V-Log L like the GH5, it's gonna have full V-Log, kind of like what the Evo 1 uses. Um, so it's gonna get the best, best part of your dynamic range um, available to you when you come to grading. And also the firmware is gonna do some other things as well, which I will be reviewing as soon as I get that in the mail. I need to get the code so I can plug it in and do some test shots with it and I can show you what that new firmware is gonna do to this already really great camera. So overall, I really like this camera. I feel like the pros outweigh the cons by a huge margin. Um, it's full frame, I don't have to worry about doing 4K 60 full frame anymore. I finally have it in this camera body and this is something that I can see lasting me the next few years. Um, because I hate camera searching all the time. I'm a huge gear nerd um, and I always wanna buy new things, but I think this one I'm gonna have to stick to. And also I didn't even mention that the in-body stabilization in this is a stop better than the GH5. So the in-body stabilization is fantastic on this. I can do my normal off gimbal stuff, whether it's be sliding shots, pushing shots. I can even do a little bit of a run if I heel toe really nice. Um, so the in-body stabilization is a stop better than the GH5, which is another very impressive thing with this camera system. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I really like this camera for what I do in the wedding industry. I feel like it's a power horse and the battery life is great and everything about the camera is just amazing. Um, and I think I'm gonna be with this camera, like I said, for the next few years. And um, the images, as you can tell from throughout this video and my previous two weddings that were shot in the Panasonic S1 um, that are on my YouTube channel specifically, um, you can go check those out to see kind of what the final image looks like. But I did one in Horseshoe Bend and I did one in Sacramento. Um, California this past, no, about three weekends ago, and the image is just out of this world. So yeah, this camera will be with me for the next few years. I'm hoping um, nothing comes out like 8K, like that's gonna be the next standard in like two years. Can you believe that? And it'll be 32K, like five years. That's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. But um, yeah, that's technology for you, and that's kind of what we have to deal with. Um, but this camera is great for me for the next two to three years which is all I need it for. If you guys have any questions about the camera at all, please leave them in the comments. I always get back to you guys like right away. So just leave your guys' questions and I'll get back to you um, with questions directly about the camera or I might make another video. I have another video coming where I'm gonna kind of go over questions that people have been asking me on Instagram and YouTube specifically and kind of make a video just addressing those topics. Um, but as far as this camera, if you guys wanna talk, like just quick little questions, I can answer those right down below. Next week we have a wedding that's gonna be in this cool like um, 
broken down church where we're gonna do our portrait session and we're gonna use the lighting and all the details of that. Um, we'll be shooting BTS of that. So BTS of that wedding and the actual wedding um, will be on my channel and also I'm gonna kind of go over some color grading techniques because I'm gonna be making this one very moody um, very kind of dark and gloomy it's gonna be something I haven't tackled before but I'm excited to try something new I love challenges that's why I do weddings because every wedding is different in my opinion um, if you tackle it that way if you let it become a job and rather than your passion then um, it won't be like that but I like to challenge myself and make every wedding different that's why I feel like I'm unique in my wedding industry because I feel like I make all my films different, the story is different, and I just try to make every film better and better each one I do. So like this video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and until the next time, I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.